Hey guys, today we are looking at writing exponential functions from word problems. We're gonna answer the question, how do I write the equation of an exponential function from a word problem? So we are still going to write it in the form y equals a times b to the x, and a is going to the initial value or starting point. So just look for the initial value or the starting point in the word problem. b you're gonna to have to think about a little bit more. That is the growth or the decay rate. So here are a few examples of how to find B from a word problem. So sometimes the B value is just going to be given. So we're gonna practice identifying B in the statements below. So if the element has a half life, that means that each life it is half of what it was. So the B value is going to be one half. And then the second statement says the amount was doubling. So if it's doubling, it just keeps timesing two of what it was before, so b would equal two. So sometimes it will be given to you like that, but sometimes there will not be enough information given to determine b. Um, so you're gonna find the common ratio of the two consecutive points instead by doing y2 divided by y1. So sometimes it's best to make a table when this happens that can help you identify the consecutive points. So let's look at this statement. It says on day one, there were six lily pads, and on day two, there were 18 lily pads. So on the first day, there were six lily pads. That six would be Y1. And then on the second day, there were 18 lily pads. That would be Y2. And then when we do Y2 divided by Y1, that would be 18 divided by six, which is three. That also makes sense if the growth rate is three because you would do six times three to get 18. So there's a couple of ways to identify the B value. All right, let's look at this first one. It says a radioactive isotope has a half-life of one year. Xavion finds a sample of 40 grams at an old nuclear site. How many grams will be left after six years? So first of all, is this growth or decay? Well, it says that it has a half life, so that means it's going to be getting smaller. So this is DK. Okay, then it's asking for A, the initial value. So it says whenever he finds the sample, it is 40 grams. So that would be the A value, 40. And then the B value would be one half, since it said half-life. It is halving each time. So our function would be y equals 40 times 1 half to the x. And then to find the grams after 6 years, we're just going to replace x with 6. So we will do 40 times 1 half to the six, and I'll just put that in the calculator, 40 times one half to the sixth, and I get 0 0.625 grams. Okay, let's look at number two, the market value of a car depreciates at an exponential rate. So I already see that word depreciate, that means I'm going down, so this is going to be a decay situation. Okay, so we have this car that's depreciating. It says when Brady bought his car, he paid $30,000. He got his car appraised three years after he bought it and it was worth $28,200. He did it again after four years of purchasing the car and it was valued at $26,508. Based on the exponential rate, what will the car be worth after seven years of purchasing? So they gave me a whole bunch of information in this table or in this word problem. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a table to help organize my thinking. So X is going to be the number of years and then Y is going to be the cost. Those are the two things that we're talking about. And it says when Brady bought the car, so that would be zero years, he paid $30,000. And then it says after three years, he got it appraised and it was at $28,200. And then after four years, it was at 26,508. Okay, now that I have all my 
information organized, it should be a little bit easier to figure out the A and the B value. So the A value is definitely going to be 30,000 since that was the initial value what he bought the car for. Okay, then the B value, I don't know the B value, but I can find it by doing Y2 divided by Y1. So I just need two consecutive ordered pairs and the only two consecutive ordered pairs are these right here because I go from three to four. I cannot use the y-intercept in this case. So I'm going to use 28,200 for y1 and then 26,508 for y2. So to find y2 divided by y1, I'll do 26,508 divided by 28,200. And I'm going to put that into the calculator, 26,508 divided by 28,000, 28,200, and I get 0 0.94. So the decay rate is 0 0.94, which makes sense. That's less than one, so it is decay. So now I can write the function. It's going to be y equals a, which is 30,000. times the decay rate, which was 0 0.94, to the x. And then it wants us to find the value of the car after seven years, so I can just substitute in seven for x. So in the calculator, I will put 30,000 times 0.94 to the seventh. So 30,000 times 0 0.94 to the seventh means that after seven years, the car would be about $19,454.33 because the seven after the two would round it. Okay, let's take a look at number three. It says a particular bacteria strain grows at an exponential rate. When Liam began his observation, there were 20 bacteria in the Petri dish. After one hour, there were 22 bacteria. Based on this exponential rate, how many bacteria will there be, there be in the petri dish after 12 hours? So it doesn't tell us whether it's growth or decay or use any words like that, but we can see that we're growing because we go from 20 bacteria to 22. So this is a growth situation. And then they gave me some information here. It doesn't look like there's straight up a growth or decay rate. So I'm going to make a table of this information to help me organize it. So X would be, I believe we're counting by hours. Yes, it says after one hour and then it's talking about after 12 hours. So X is going to be the hours and then Y is going to be the number of bacteria. And it said after zero hours, or whenever he began his observation, so that would be zero hours, there was 20 bacteria. And then after one hour, there were 22 bacteria. So our A value is what there was when Liam started, which was 20 bacteria. And then to find the B value, I just have to do Y2 divided by Y1. And these two points are consecutive, so I can use these y values to find it. So 20 will be y1, 22 will be y2. So we will do 22 divided by 20. And I'm just going to get the decimal of that in the calculator, which is 1.1, which makes sense that's larger than 1, and this was a growth function. So the function or the equation would be y equals, the initial value was 20, times 1.1 to the x. And then to figure out how much bacteria there would be after 12 hours, I just am going to substitute in 12 for x. So I will do 20 times 1.1 to the 12. And after 12 hours, there would be about 62.77 bacteria.
All right, last one, Caleb collects baseball cards. He is expecting to triple his collection every year. In 2021, he had 25 baseball cards. Based on this exponential rate, how many cards will he have in 2026? So he is expecting to triple his collection. So that is definitely going to be growth. And that means that the B value is three since we are tripling. Okay, then the A value is the initial value. It looks like we're starting in 2021 and he had 25 baseball cards. So the initial value is going to be 25. That was in 2021, that'll be important. Okay, then the function will be Y equals, the initial value that we're using is 25 times three to the X. Okay, so 2021 is five years before 2026. We can kind of think of this as where X is zero. So if X is zero in 2021, that means in 2026 that X is five, because we're trying to figure out five years later. So I'm going to replace X with five to figure out how many baseball cards he will have in 2026. So 25 times three to the fifth power, and I get 6,705 cards if he triples his collection every year.